Okay, today we're going to be looking at the simple past, specifically at German irregular and modal verbs. So, on to the simple past. Um, what the lecture is going to focus on today is, first of all, looking at an example in English, what the simple past is, um, what it does, and then briefly talk about instances of usage in German. So when do we use the simple past in German? Um, and then we're going to be forming the simple past using three verbs, uh, well, one verb and two modal verbs, brennen, to burn, uh, müssen, to be required, to, uh, to, to must do something, and wollen is to want or to desire. Uh, last two are modal verbs, and the first one, Brennan, is going to be a uh, irregular verb. So the simple past, what is it? So the simple past, uh, like the first sentence, I rode the bus to work, it could be a single event. I, in the past, I rode the bus to work one time, and that was it. Or it could be a habitual action, I rode the bus to work every day. Or the simple past could also talk about uh, sort of a state of being. I knew what to do. Uh, so the main thing is with the simple past, it's a one verb construction. It, it's not a verb with a helping verb, like I have known what to do or I have ridden the bus. So in German, the simple past is used mostly in written narrative. So books, newspapers, uh, fairy tales, everything in fairy tale is, in, in German fairy tales, is written in the, uh, in the simple past. Now, the simple past is mostly a, a written form. It's used less in spoken German. Uh, however, there are a few instances where the simple past is used frequently in German. And I tell my students that the simple past in, with these uh, uh, with these verbs are there what I term the high frequency verbs. So haben, uh, sein, and the modal verbs, which we're going to be looking at today. So uh, there's basically three ways to form the simple past in German. The video that I created uh, a couple days ago uh, looked specifically at weak verbs. And uh, if you have a question about that, I refer you to the video. What we're going to be looking at today is irregular verbs. Uh, irregular verbs, that's how I learned them. That's what they were termed, irregular verbs. Other people call them mixed verbs. So uh, what makes an irregular verb or a mixed verb? So we look at brennen here, to burn. Uh, up on the screen, we have brennen in the infinitive form. We have brennt, third person singular, er, z, s, brennt. The simple past, brannte, and the past participle, uh, gebrannt. So these are the four principal parts of a German verb. Now, you'll notice that brennen and brennt, the present tense form, uh, we have an e in the vowel, uh, an e in the, the stem of the, the root of the verb. However, in the past, the simple past and the past participle, the E turns into an A. Now, this is something that is uh, typical of strong verbs. So, an irregular verb, a mixed verb, has a vowel change in uh, from the present to the past, but uh, the past participle, gebrannt, is formed in the same way as a weak verb. So an irregular verb or a weak verb, uh, an irregular verb or a mixed verb, has characteristics of both uh, weak verbs and strong verbs in German. So what we're going to do is we're going to focus specifically on the third principal part, the, the simple past. So we take brannte, and you'll notice that when we take brannte to form the simple past, um, it already has the simple past marker added. So we saw in the video presentation, we see in the video pre presentation with weak verbs that we have to add the simple tense, uh, the simple past marker. In irregular verbs, it's already been added, so we don't have to worry about it. So what we do have to do is we have to add some type of ending to the verb based on the conjugation pattern. So du brantest. Uh, the conjugation pattern you'll see in the upper right hand corner, uh, the first and third person singular which doesn't add an ending. Uh, the plurals add endings. The only thing that adds an ending in the singular is the st in the second person. So let's take a closer look at that. Uh, of those conjugations there. So, 
brannte, ich brannte, du branntest, er, sie, es brannte, wir brannten, ihr branntet, sie brannten, sie brannten. So that's basically what we have to do with the regular verbs. And there's just the pattern uh, with the, the conjugation, uh, I'm sorry, with the four principal parts is you just have to memorize those. So brennen, 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 brennt, brannte, gebrannt, kennen, kennen, kannte, gekannt, rennen, rennen, rannte, gerannt. So if, if you memorize those, eventually it'll just sort of flow in and you just add the endings from the conjugation pattern. Now with the modal verbs, and we have müssen or to, to to do to be required to to uh, be obligated to do something. Uh, again, we have the four principal parts: müssen, muss, musste, gemusst. And we want to focus again, as usual, on the simple past form of that of the of the verb müssen. However, you notice that when we when we make the simple past construction, if the verb has an umlaut like müssen or dürfen or können, that we're going to have to drop the umlaut off. So we get the basic sort of simple pass, musste. Uh, it already has a simple pass marker added, so we don't have to do anything else to it, uh, with the exception of adding the endings. So same conjugation pattern, we tack on the endings, and we get the simple pass of a modal verb with an umlaut, which is ich musste, du musstest, er sie es musste, wir müssten, uh, ihr müsstet, sie mussten. Now, uh, some modal verbs actually don't have an umlaut, and if it doesn't have an umlaut, we still use the simple past form, the third principal part of the verb, but it doesn't add it, it doesn't have an umlaut to begin with, so there's nothing to take off. So we have wollte, and we simply tack on, well, it already has the, the simple past marker added to it, and so uh, we simply tack on the endings that are from the conjugation pattern with the effect, uh, with the result that we get something that uh, looks very similar to what we've already seen. Ich wollte, du wolltest, er sie es wollte, wir wollten, ihr wolltet, sie wollten, sie wollten. So um, that's basically how to form the simple past with the uh, with irregular verbs. Uh, with the and with modal verbs, uh, the next presentation that we'll I'll be making will be looking specifically at strong verbs and how to form the simple past from them.